we got smoke, we got fire, shadows, lighting, clouds, really vibrant and rich tree colors in the back landscape. Hey everyone, today in this video, we're gonna be checking out the BenQ GW2485TC stylish monitor with eye care technology. I did receive this monitor from BenQ, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Very simple and straightforward with BenQ's logo and branding on it. We also have a QR code you can scan for more information. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have all of our product literature followed by the stand that's in two pieces we'll have to assemble. Two different cables, our power cord, and we have a USB type C to USB type C cable. And lastly, we have the monitor itself. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Here's a look at the back side of the monitor. We got the BenQ logo and branding, Visa mount option, as well as using the included stand. I love the pattern and design we have on the back cover. That's so much better than just a boring old monitor back. We have our release button right here if we want to take the stand off. Kensington security lock, additional product information. Let's tip it up right here. So we have our power connector. We have multiple connection options. So they're clearly labeled for us. We have our headphone jack, HDMI, display port in, USB type C, and display port out if we want to daisy chain some monitors together. Looking at this side too, we have all of our different buttons and controls right here. Looks like we have an illuminated power button, which is great. Let's look at it from the sides and get a feel for how thick this monitor is. We'll tip it up so you can see it this way as well too. Get a feel for that. Thinner at the top, gets a little bit thicker towards the center. And now we'll look at the display from the front. So all the different indicators and lights right here. BenQ logo and branding. Looks like we got our light sensor. 24 inches measured diagonally. Very thin bezel all around our IPS panel. That's where the pixels end right there where my fingernail is. So just make that little border all the way around there. And you may notice it's about a fingernail's width per se length. I don't know how you want to say that for the plastic bezel cover. So very, very slim design for this monitor near bezel-less. Now let's go ahead and let's get the stand installed. First thing we have to do for a stand installation is actually assemble the stand and it does have a nice tool list design. Here's the two pieces we're gonna use and we're just gently gonna line them up as shown, drop it in place. And now we can tighten this down. Just nice and snug finger tights all you need, but they do have the option if you wanna use a Phillips head or flathead screwdriver, you can. We have an open and a lock positioning here too. So. We have that assembled and you can see we're able to move that around when we have the panel on. Now let's go ahead, we're just gonna gently line up these two metal tabs with the monitor itself and it's gonna snap right in place. So here we go, just like that, snaps in. Now we're ready to lift it up. Ta-da, we have just assembled the monitor stand. Let's take a look at this, this is pretty impressive. So. We have an adjustable height right here. Look at that, very tall, very low. We have some tilt, so we can tilt it pretty far back. We can tilt it forward as well. Let's look at that from the side to get a feel for that tilt. So that's tilted all the way down, tilted all the way back. We also have the ability to give us a nice rotation and pivot to the left and to the right. So I like that swivel design right there. And now let's go ahead, let's bring it all the way up and see if we can rotate it and change our viewing angle. Yes, we can. So now we have our portrait viewing experience. If you'd rather have the vertical setup, maybe you wanna read stream chat, spreadsheets, things like that. You have that ability with the included stand. And you can see we can actually rotate it the other way as well too. So we have basically full movement in motion with this stand. This is what I like to see. Definitely giving you everything that's available today in regards to stand. So hopefully you don't have to spend any extra money and buy a different stand, but this does have Visa mount options available if that's something you still wanna do. So we have the monitor plugged in and powered on and we have it connected to our desktop PC via HDMI. First thing we're gonna do is bring up the menu settings here and we're gonna quickly go over the different options that we have. So 
First up, you may notice we have these arrow keys at the bottom that we can use to then navigate and choose the setting that we want. So first up, we have input, USB type C, HDMI or display port. Next, we have learning where we can choose different visual modes depending on what we're doing. Care mode, coding, reading or e-paper. We also have different audio scenarios for each of those. You can choose and tweak standard dialogue, music, etc. Then we have our different mode settings right here. So standard low blue light movie game sRGB color weakness if you want to correct that eco or a user mode. We'll look at that in more detail here in a little bit. Next we have our eye care settings. So brightness intelligence, low blue light plus and color weakness again. And if we go into this setting, I want to show you that we can turn the brightness intelligence on or off. Next we have our color settings. We can adjust brightness, contrast, sharpness, reset the colors. Our audio settings, this does have built-in speakers, so we can adjust the volume. We have our mic settings and different audio scenarios, as mentioned earlier. Custom settings we can tweak depending on the different keys. We can configure some of those keys here. So here's key one. We can choose different options for that. Same with key two. And then lastly, we have our system settings here. So our OSD settings, different display modes. You get the idea what we're able to do. USB type C charging 60 watt. We can turn that on or off. But very easy to navigate menu. Everything's clear, nice and organized so you can find exactly what you need. Now I wanted to dive into some of the picture settings in more detail. So first up, we're in the learning section, visual mode. Currently it's set to care. Let's change it to coding. So now we're in the coding option. We'll move it to reading. You can see that really has changed it. And then obviously e-paper is going to give you that like Kindle experience. Let's go back to care, coding, reading, e-paper, back to care. Now let's look at some more visual settings. Let's go down to the mode section right here. So currently we are in our standard mode. Here's low blue light plus movie, game, sRGB, color weakness, eco, and then we have our user setting. Let's cycle back to standard, low blue light, movie, game, sRGB, color weakness, eco, user, back to standard. So you get the idea here, each one is gonna change and tweak the image, sometimes more substantially than others but you have to make sure that you have it set properly for whatever you prefer, for whatever type of content that you're consuming at any given moment while you're using this monitor. Now we're looking at the eye care settings. We have brightness intelligence turned on. So we have it turned on right here. If we go down, we have the option to also turn on or off the light meter and we can adjust the sensitivity of it, but now it'll use the light meter to read the ambient light in the room. It's gonna gauge the current light and adjust the display for us automatically. So we have a lot of light in the room right now with the studio lights on and everything, but watch what happens. Look over here, see if you notice anything. As I cover the sensor, it's now adjusting right here and it gives you that little logo the little eye letting you know what's going on and it's going to make the proper adjustments for you and then i removed my hand from the sensor now we're increasing the brightness again so very neat very responsive too it's going to be continually reading the room in the lighting environment and if conditions change it's going to respond accordingly now let's talk about color accuracy and representation with this monitor so we conducted this test using display cal and our gamut coverage is 94.3% sRGB, 66.7% Adobe RGB. That seems exceptionally low. And we got 68.8% for our DCI P3. That also seems low as well. For our volume, we're showing 97.1% sRGB, 66.9% Adobe RGB, 
and 68.7% DCI P3. Now I just wasn't sold on those results, so I went ahead, I ran another instance of Display Cal to calibrate the monitor, and we're getting very similar results here. Now keep in mind, these are just my results and what I'm finding testing out this particular display, but hopefully it helps you in the decision-making process, especially if color accuracy is something that's really important to you for maybe graphic design, things like that. So. Gamut coverage, this time 88.2% sRGB, 64.2% Adobe RGB, and 68.1% DCI P3. So now we're looking at our advanced display settings right here. This is a 1920 by 1080p full HD monitor with up to 75 Hertz for the refresh rate. So far we've gotten pretty technical, but don't forget this monitor can handle simple tasks as well, like browsing the web. Here's what it's gonna look like if you wanna browse popular websites like YouTube. We have the trending page pulled up right here. Check it out, a lot of different videos loading for us with their thumbnails, titles. If you can tell, everything's very clear and crisp with the display. Let's bring up The Verge, so if you wanna read a lot of news, you can expect a nice browsing experience, all the different colors, all different fonts, text, headlines, everything here. Let's go ahead, let's just click on an article so you can see how it loads. Images look great. Text is clear, crisp, very detailed. And then lastly, obviously you might wanna do some shopping. So we got a popular e-commerce site here, Amazon up. You can get a feel for how everything displays. Images low great, product listing, pages, all that good stuff right here, clear crisp and enjoyable to look at. Now you're looking at the UFO test on the BenQ monitor showing different FPS values at 75 Hertz. You can see as we increase that FPS value to match our refresh rate, we get smoother footage. So the Alien is way smoother and more fluid going across that top line than even the middle or the bottom as we basically double FPS values every time the quality gets substantially better. So you can see why for gaming, you're gonna to wanna to have the highest FPS value possible that your machine or computer can output, as well as matching that with a monitor that can support that FPS value. So at a minimum, 75 Hertz is around the baseline today that's available. If you can get to 144 Hertz, at 144 FPS, things like that. That's definitely a sweet spot for gamers. But on the low budget end, if you wanted to use this for gaming at 75 Hertz, this can give you a realistic expectation of how those games running at 75 FPS, if your system can handle it, will look. Now we're gonna be testing out the built-in speakers. We have the volume set to 90, and we're gonna play the song Claim Your Victory by Music Chef. Music Chef is home to free stream safe music for content creators. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. Not much difference listening front or back. If you have this up against a wall, that may help give you a little bit fuller sound, reflecting right off the wall. But if you're sitting at your desk right in front of this monitor, you'll have no issues hearing anything. And they actually don't sound that bad. Now, I'm a big fan of the BenQ Mobius lineup. Basically, with those monitors that they make, they have like a tiny sound bar built in, and they sound fantastic. I would say this just sounds a little bit better than above average for monitor speaker quality. But if you're looking for great speakers in a monitor, check out the BenQ Mobius lineup. Moving on, it's time to test the input lag on this monitor. So keep in mind, input lag is different from response time. A response time is the amount of time it takes a pixel to change from one color to another. Oftentimes you'll see like a four millisecond response time G to G, so that would be gray to gray changing colors. Input lag is the amount of delay between basically when a signal is implemented and processed on the display. So. Using this box, we're able to measure everything. So let's see what our input lag is. We're showing around 1.3, 1.4 milliseconds. Not bad at all for this particular monitor. That's great. A lot of times we'll see it around one millisecond for IPS panels, VA, 
TN. Sometimes we can dip below one millisecond if it's usually a TN panel, but this is right within range hovering around 1.3 milliseconds for our BenQ IPS panel. Also, if you're wondering about response time, this monitor has a five millisecond response time per BenQ's website. Now it's time to talk about all things gaming. First up, we have some Forza 5 footage up on the monitor. If you wanna see what a racing game looks like right here, 60 FPS, 1920, 1080p. Look at the detail in the low light environment with all the shadows, the horizon, the constantly changing landscapes, the detail on the cars, and obviously the fairly fluid motion, I'd say. All the detail, the colors. Even for me, viewing it off to the side with IPS panels, it's definitely the best viewing experience possible, especially if you're not gonna be, you know, centered up and squared with the monitor. Very clear, very crisp. Really enjoyable to look at. Now we have Hitman 3 pulled up. Watch as it progresses through the house in the mansion with the different explosion and bullet holes. The detail here, the shadows, the lighting environment. You can get a feel for the gameplay here. Cuts to outside now. Currently over 200 FPS at 1920 by 1080. You can see some explosions there. Got the chandeliers falling, so some fast movement. But that's a quick look at Hitman 3. And now you're looking at Assassin's Creed Valhalla with all the characters moving around. I love the camera angles for this. We got smoke, we got fire, shadows, lighting, clouds, really vibrant and rich tree colors in the back landscape. Fluid and fast movement. We're hovering around 115 or so FPS, give or take. 1920, 1080p. Look at the contrast and detail there. This is just the standard picture settings still the water. Quality looks really nice. I love IPS panels for their colors. They do a nice job. This landscape's pretty sweet too. Look at that, those ruins there in the town. And don't worry for you console gamers out there, I got you. We have the PlayStation 5 connected right now and you can see our Fortnite footage and gameplay. So this will be 1080p, 60 FPS is what we're able to get with this monitor. but very fluid, very responsive, just like the other gameplay. For fast movement motion, it's doing a really good job. You can see that right here. And then let's go ahead, watch as I move around really quickly too. Just to get a feel for that performance right here. We'll jump off. Do some running. And we can open fire. We'll jump. So everything is working great, whether you're playing on a console or PC. Friendly reminder that this monitor is equipped with a built-in microphone that you can turn on or off as you see fit. So currently we have it on, we have our green light, we can turn it off, the icon comes up on the display, and we have our orange light right there. So let's turn it back on. You're listening now to the raw mic audio. Now I'm actually behind the monitor talking, so keep that in mind. This is what it's gonna sound like if for some reason you're behind the monitor. Let's go ahead, let's see if we can turn it and face it towards us now. So here we go. We are now looking at the monitor. I'd say this is probably about as far away as you would be if you're typing or you're working. This is what it's gonna sound like, the raw mic audio. Now, for our application within OBS, we did um, decrease the decibels by around seven and a half decibels, so it wasn't clipping. You will have to adjust the microphone within Windows or your computer or software, program settings, whatever you're using this microphone for, Zoom, Skype, whatever it may be, adjust the microphone to make sure 
that you're not clipping or anything like that, but this is your raw mic audio. So overall, after using this monitor, let me share with you my final thoughts. First thing I wanna say is this monitor gets a lot right. USB type C, display port and daisy chaining if we want. We have a really nice included stand that gives us all the rotation features and things that we would desire. Still have Visa mount if that's the route that we wanna go. IPS panel, 24 inches, very nice bezel-less design. This also has built-in speakers that don't sound bad. And it's great for web browsing, data entry, programming, if you wanna do some gaming on it. This is a nice monitor. I also like that we have our ambient light sensor down at the bottom. So if you're sensitive to light or you want to have this help you with low blue light modes or adjusting it automatically for you in whatever environment you're in, you will appreciate having some of those features with this monitor. That I also mentioned has a built-in microphone. I think that's a little bit of a gimmick, but it's also pretty cool. But I would say if you're giving us a built-in microphone, you might as well give us a built-in webcam as well. That's what I'd like to see with this monitor in the future. Throw a little webcam up at the top for us. That that would be really nice. Other than that, maybe some additional USB type A ports we could use to connect a keyboard and a mouse directly to the display. Other than that, I'd like to see improved color accuracy. That could be important for some of you out there doing color intensive work, photo, video editing, things like that. Overall though, for me, gaming and casually using it, I didn't notice any like glaring color issues or anything like that. And BenQ definitely makes more color accurate monitors. If there's a certain sRGB value, DCI P3 value that you're looking for in coverage, they should have you covered. See what I did there? But anyways, overall solid monitor, definitely built towards productivity in my opinion.